Well, hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I have a special guest with me today, uh, personal image consultant and author, Ginger. Welcome, Ginger. So for those of you who may be joining me for the first time, um, I am a success mindset mentor. And what I do is I help ambitious women who are so tired of the hustle and grind. I show them a different approach on how to earn more money with ease and flow. And I, Ginger and I were just talking about that. I think we all want that, right? And we're all on that hamster wheel right now. But let's get started. Um, so welcome again, Ginger. I'm really excited to have you here with us today. And I think our guests are very eager to learn what you have to share with us. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to read a little bit about your bio. And let me just backtrack. One of the reasons I had Ginger come on today is because we both focus on an individual self-image, you know, both internal and external. And one of the ways we express ourselves is how we dress. And my mentor, Bob Proctor, always says the quickest way to change your self-image is by the way you dress. And I was just sharing with Ginger as I was getting ready for today, um, I was in my bathrobe and, you know, I was trying to primp and all of that. But it wasn't until I put my clothes on, I could feel the vibration change. I could feel my image change. It's really quite interesting. So let me give you um, a quick little bio for Ginger. Um, so for over 30 years, Ginger Burr, she's the president of Total Image Consultants, has helped the world create a wardrobe they love by connecting their inner essence. She is at Mount Holyoke College and the author of the book, That's So You. I love that title. I love that title. And she is also the creator of the live online class, Create Your Personal Style in Six Weeks. Ginger has been interviewed by Worth Magazine, Forbes Magazine, Fox News, and Bloomberg Business, and now also us, right, Lou Perica. <laughs> and Ginger's heartfelt belief is whether you are 25 or 85, you deserve to feel radiant together every time you get dressed. So thanks, Ginger. Um, all right, my first question to you. Uh, and I know you have a lot to share with us, but what prompted you to become a personal image consultant? I struggled with how to dress myself, believe it or not. I know that sometimes people think that, you know, anyone who's in the fashion industry, image consultants, fashion gurus, that they've known how to dress themselves since birth. Mm -hmm. And I always had an interest, but I didn't know how. And of course, I was also a teenager back in the 70s, which there was no internet, there were no makeover TV shows, you know, we didn't hang out at the mall, you know, that was just, it was a different world. And I struggled a lot. And it wasn't until I turned 30 that I actually found someone who had the answers that I was looking for and could guide me. I went to a three-day workshop and I swear I was only in it for an hour. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this woman knows what I need to know. And I picked it up really quickly because I was passionate about it. But I also had an affinity for it and, a, and a obviously, well, I think a gift for it. And um, and I begged her to, to mentor me. So mm -hmm. she trained me. And just the relief that came with that was palpable and i realized that i i've now i've walked in my client's shoes so i know how frustrating it can be when you don't know like i tried to dress like her and that didn't work how come it looks good on her but it doesn't look good on me and you know i put things together and think why not and when i learned what I, the pieces the missing tools that i needed it all came together. And I feel like now what I can do and have done for a long time is empower other women to feel the same way. Yeah, and I think that's um, that's what, what a lot of us, that's what happens. We go through this shift and it's so powerful. We yeah. just really wanna share it with others. I know um, 
with real estate agents, I've heard quite a few realtors say that they've worked with the realtor. This is before they got their license. And the experience was either so bad or so good yeah. that it triggered something in them. And they said, this is what I want to do. And the same thing happened with me. Yeah. I was a little bit lost, this, that, and the other thing. I got some mentorship and boom, I was like, this is it. This is it, right? Because we go through a lot of unnecessary angst for, only because we don't have the answers. Yeah. It's yeah. so simple, right? <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you, why is um, how we look so important in our lives and what impact does it have both inner and outer to live a life of joy and ease? I have had so many women come to me who, and one woman put it really well. She said, you know, I'm tired of expending so much mental energy, trying to put an outfit together in the morning. And, and then I finally have to choose something. And then I spend the rest of the day expending more mental energy, feeling like this doesn't work. Is this too tight? Is it too big? Is it too whatever? And she said, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. And so when how we look in our lives, it affects our psyche, it affects our self-esteem, it affects our level of self-confidence. And when you put together outfits or wardrobe that make you feel great when you get dressed, first of all, you save a lot of time and energy because you're not standing in front of your closet thinking, Ugh, what, do, you know, how do, what do I wear today? And then settle for what you always wear. You can just go in, get dressed, be on your way and feel really good. And it's also a form of personal self-expression. So you can give people clues as to who you are by how you pull yourself together. And that's something I work with. I call it um, expressing your inner beauty. That's something I work with every single one of my clients on because it's incredibly powerful. I couldn't agree more. Um... So that's the part where I also step in when I work with my clients is in, I think we should, um, so whenever I do an interview with, um, with my guests, we always do a pre-call. And when Ginger and I were speaking on our pre-call, I had mentioned to her, I watched Oprah Winfrey one day and she was interviewing this woman. And I don't remember the conversation, but Oprah had asked this woman a question and the woman just said, I just don't care. You know, I don't care. I don't know if it was the situation she was in, how she looked. I don't know what it was, but I remember her saying, I just don't care. And Oprah's response was an emotional impact for me. It stuck with me. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oprah said, it shows. Mm. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Wow. So every way that we express it. So just let's just go back just quickly when i was in my bathrobe i know it sounds a little silly right but that image i was seeing was not in harmony with my inner being that was like if that makes sense you may understand what i'm trying to say right but sometimes when we dress really super super casual and super super comfortable we just feel oh because it's really not in harmony about with our magnificence within us, the potential, who we really are. That's why when we put on a beautiful blouse or a suit or whatever it may be, we're in true essence with who we are. But sometimes there's that inner and that outer self-image, right? Well, what I have discovered with my clients, or at least the women who come to me, if, first of all, those who come to me don't ever say I don't care. They're coming to me because they do. Okay. And what I have seen from other women is that if they say they don't care, it's a defense mechanism usually. Yes, yes, absolutely. And if they truly did, it's not that they th those people don't care. It's that they've already figured out how they express themselves. And that might be super duper casual. It might be jeans and a t-shirt and that makes their heart sing. And that's awesome. That's totally awesome. Mm -hmm. There's a that disconnect between what you have on and who you are 
on the inside. That's why I work with somebody's inner beauty. Even if you look good, but it, if it doesn't express who you are, it more expresses your mother or your best friend or the saleswoman at the store. You're not going to feel great in it. Yeah, the, you're off. You're right? just off. You're off. You're off. And it really needs to feel authentic mm-hmm. to you. And so obviously that woman who was talking to Oprah, I mean, not obviously, but my guess is, she really, on some level, did care, but she didn't know how. Right. You know, right. Whatever. I don't know what she was talking. And about. sometimes, when depending on what the conversation, what the situation is, sometimes people just give up. Oh, again, totally. Because they just don't have the answers. Yes. No one's guiding them. Yes. Right? So um, I think that's what it was about. But it was so powerful. Ooh. And I used to say that with a, someone in my life when that I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, and I'd be like but it shows yeah. because when we really care about something, we put the time and effort into it. And our inner self is really reflected. Our self image is reflected in everything. Not only the way we dress, our friendships, our relationships, our health. It's what are we, what are we putting the energy into? What do we really care about to take the time and effort, right? To nurture it and nourish it, it right. nourish it. it. Um, okay, so can you share with us some examples of how you've helped clients transform their self-image and boost their self-esteem? Uh, oh, well, that's basically what I do with everyone is I make their life. Uh, my tagline is to take to help reduce the stress and getting dressed and replace it with more joy and ease. Mm. And one of the ways I've been doing that most recently is through my six week class. And the thing I always, it's called, as you mentioned earlier, create your personal style in six weeks. Now I am under no illusion that 99% of the people in the class will by the end of the six weeks have everything I'm done. No, this is an ongoing uh, process. It's a lifelong mm-hmm. journey. But you know what you mentioned earlier is people giving up. It's the only. I tell people it's the only time you won't get where you want to go, is if you give up. But mm-hmm. they give up because they don't have the tools. Yeah. And so what I do is help them to be able to say, yes, this is who I am. Yes, this color looks great on me. Yes, I can make a complete outfit out of this. And I remember one woman who, this was a a while ago, but she was going for a job interview and she was super nervous. And she basically had been in a position where she was, you know, not seeing a lot of the public. So she just kind of dressed however. Mm -hmm. But now she was not only going to have to interview, but then she was going to have a more public position. So she wanted to feel confident. Mm -hmm. And what was really important for her was that we not make such drastic changes that she didn't feel like she recognized herself when she looked in the mirror anymore. So we went back to stores that she liked, but we made different choices. And I helped her to be able to pull together an outfit so that when she went into the interview, she felt confident. She felt like she could then, this is the important part, when you feel confident about how you look, you can then forget about how you look and you can focus on what the reason you're there, which for her was to make a good impression, to be able to respond appropriately to the questions and those kinds of things, and ultimately to get the job. And she did, and she happened to have known someone on the search committee and who was a friend of hers and her friend came over to her afterwards and says, you know, how you looked made a difference because it showed that she had a sense of self-confidence, professionalism, you know, whatever that look was, that was because she was reflecting not only the company, they wanted to make sure she was going to reflect well on the company, but also her own personal inner beauty. So those things go hand in hand. And I've seen this kind of thing happen over and over. I always say the focus really is on your own self-confidence. And when you feel self-confident and great about the way you look, you project this energy and that confidence out to the world and other people pick up on it. And so that's what she was able to do in countless other women that I've worked with as well. 
Yeah, it really is amazing. You know, we talked about um, being comfortable and we've had this discussion. I really am a jeans and t-shirt girl. I, I love jeans. I love a great t-shirt. I love a great sweater, pair of shoes, boots. I, it's very simple. My look is, is very simple. Um, but what was interesting, and, and I'm sure you get this, is after or during the pandemic, where we were all at home and kind of, you know, we didn't have to have our cameras on if we were on Zoom. Um, really, people became more and more comfortable just wearing sweats. And one of the things that I made sure, I said, every day I take a shower and put on makeup, get dressed. And I didn't mean I didn't have to put on a silk blouse, but Every day I made it a point not to fall into that habit, create a habit. So where society is becoming more and more casual and people are working from home, how does one, you know, enjoy a casual wardrobe and still feel pulled together? Yeah, you know, it is one of the things we were heading in this direction anyway, even yeah. before the pandemic, but the pandemic, the pandemic accelerated. Okay. Yeah. And so, and the focus really has been on comfort. Now I've been shopping with women in the past where we go into a store and they put something on and they'll say, oh, it's so comfortable, good, I'll get this. And I'm like, uh, wait, 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 great. We have comfort down, that is key, it's important. We wanna make sure that you're comfortable what you're wearing. But we wanna look at the other aspects of it. Is the color good, does it fit you right? Where are you gonna wear it? What does it go with? You know, all of those kinds of things. But what happened during the pandemic is we stopped at comfort. I just mm. want this to be comfortable. And the other thing that we forget is we, we can expand our definition or just the options for what is comfortable. So yes, vests are comfortable, fleece is comfortable, but there are a lot of clothes. Right now I'm wearing a jacket that's ponte knit. It's so stretchy. I mean, it's almost like wearing a sweatshirt. It's super comfortable, but it has a more business casual type. Mm -hmm. look. So what we want to do is expand our options of what is what to define, redefine casual and comfortable so that we're not also, I think what happens, and I've, I've heard this from a lot of women, they get bored. Okay. Yeah. I've been wearing my, you know, sweatshirt or t-shirt or whatever it is every day i need something else or now i want to be able to go out to dinner with friends or on a date with my significant other and i don't want to just wear my jeans and a t-shirt or sweats mm -hmm. how do you then translate your desire for comfort into something that feels a little bit more upscale so comfort can span i mean it can go all the way to dressy if you really wanted to. And it's just a matter of keeping an open mind about that. And, and also, so a lot of times what I do is I lay my clothes out. I, mm -hmm. I put the pants on the bed. Um, <laughs> so the legs, the legs of the pants are hanging over the bed. And then I like put the shoes under, you know, under the, the bottom of the pant. And then I put my top and then I throw the belt because I want to see what does that outfit look like. And um, usually that really works for me. The other thing sometimes is I know when I'm rushing and I just throw something on, I feel off. I just, even though it might look presentable, I just feel off. And what I've started to do is get rid of those clothes, even though I maybe at one point I really liked them. I don't feel good when I put it on. So I know it's time for that piece to go. Right. Because I always want to feel good. Even if, I mean, I bought beautiful sweat suits, right? They're, they're casual, but when I put them on, I just feel pulled together. Right. So yeah. for me, you know, it's always about feeling really, really good. Um, so in your opinion, what kind of mindset shifts do you see as important when beginning to dedicate the time to refine one's personal style? A lot of times what happens, and I've seen this over and over with my clients, is when someone walks into a store, and this is primarily for women who don't really love to shop or have 
lost the love of shopping. It, it's rarely for someone who, oh, I love to shop and I'm happy to go out and I spend time doing that and I come home with what I want. Mm -hmm. It's more for um, the women who feel frustrated by it. And what happens when they walk into a store then, because they've had bad experiences, is they walk in and go, oh my gosh, there's so much there. <laughs> oh, it's too expensive. Nothing ever fits me right. It's the colors are all terrible, you know, whatever it might be. And if that's your frame of mind, when you go into the store, the universe will deliver to you what you're putting out there. And so yeah. I, many times I've said, okay, take a breath, take a breath. And now let's, let's look at what, what do you want to have happen? And, you know, I want to have something beautiful. I want to find something that I feel really good in. I want to find something that fits me. And so what I have them do is just try to embody that information, not with any specifics, but just, okay, we're going to find things that you love. And it's amazing what can happen that yeah, way. It's because just, they're opening up the mind space. Yes. The mind space before was filled with, yeah. oh, I hate shopping. I can never find anything, da, 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 da. Right. But once you open up that space, you put all that crap behind you, open up the space and say, today's my lucky day. I just feel good. I know I'm going to find something. Da, da, da. But also what I've also noticed, um, you're a color consultant. Years ago, um, there was a book, I don't know, Color Me Beautiful or something like that, broke down the different seasons of how, uh, like I'm a winter, I think we talked about it, and I think you're referred to as an autumn or fall. And then there's the spring and the summer. So there's certain colors um, that work best for certain, whatever season you're in, right? Again, um, for me, it's jewel tone colors. Um, but once you understand, I'm sure when people start working with you, once they understand what colors look best, what styles look best, um, what length the jacket should be, how big should a handbag be or not, where should it fall, right? What kind of earrings, what kind of haircut, all of that. It makes it so much easier. Right. You don't have to go like this, <laughs> yeah. right? Absolutely. All the rocks. One of the things that I tell women all the time is we start with color. Mm -hmm. And right there, you can go, okay, yes, I want to go to this part of the store, not to that part of the store. I want to go over to this rack. And so for someone, I, I actually don't do the seasons, I, but I, I'm familiar because that's what so many people know. Yep. I have a more individualized system. So someone might have a color palette that looks like this. Mm. And so they can look at their palette and go, oh, look, there's some pinks over there. Oh, there's some teals over there, whatever it might be. And they can identify those colors and it makes shopping so much more streamlined. Also, the other thing in terms of mindset is if you go into shopping with a plan mm -hmm. and you know what you need to be looking for and you know that, oh yeah, look at orange isn't in my palette or whatever it might be. Okay, you can skip parts of stores, but also if they don't have what you want, you can confidently leave the store without buying anything. And it's in a way it's a celebration because obviously that happens over and over. Something's not right. And we need to work on what that is. Mm -hmm. But if you leave the store thinking, nope, I used to go in and I would make myself buy something. But now I go in and go, nope, there's nothing here for me today. And you can leave and you can do it much more quickly and with much a greater sense of confidence that it was OK not to buy something that was just going to sit in your wardrobe and you weren't going to wear. OK, this question just popped into my head, so I'm going to take advantage of having you here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to a holiday party and the attire is uh, it says cocktail attire. Mm -hmm. Now, in my mind, I think, oh, dresses, a little glitter, which is it's really not my style. It's not my thing. So what could you recommend for me? I mean, I don't mind putting on a blouse and slacks. I don't, I really don't do dresses. The high heels, you know, a low heel now, those high heels are <laughs> long gone. Um, so what is it something, would it be more for jewelry to spice something up? It can be. If there's some, if you like something that's a little more subdued or a little, well, not subdued, but a little more simple, 
Mm -hmm. And yes, you could add sparkling earrings. You could add a pretty jacket over the top of it. I would say wear something that is a festive color in okay. a beautiful, a, a really beautiful, maybe a silky kind of fabric mm -hmm. or something that floats beautifully. Uh, maybe carry a sparkly handbag or if you're not into sparkle, just something that's a clutch, a pretty clutch in a, in a, you know, a, that may just rather than a lot of times what happens is people go, oh yeah, I forgot about the handbag. And then they the carry handbag. a handbag with this pretty outfit and it does, whoa, that doesn't work. So that is so true. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you I mean, don't want to buy a handbag. I'm not going to use it again. Right. But I think you can buy, I don't have to buy an expensive one. No, and you can buy it in a color like for you, you know, since you wear the winter colors, you buy it in black mm -hmm. so that you can, it'll go with a lot of things. Maybe you add a little bit brighter lipstick, something that just makes you feel a little more, you know, festive. Special. Be, yeah, special. A little bit more special. Well, thank you for that tip, because I'll tell you, I was like, oh, cocktail attire. I think it's <laughs> been on my mind, it, for yeah. sure. Okay, so um, we're looking for some tips from you. So what are the three biggest shopping mistakes that women typically make? You know, it's such a, a fun question, although people might not think that it is. And I have this like this list over here of like eight things because there really are a whole bunch of things that we can do that can undermine our effectiveness, effectiveness and our success in shopping. But one of them is buying something I called an orphan, something that doesn't go with anything else. Oh, I love this top. And then you get it home. And unless you've been thinking, oh yes, it'll go with those pants or that skirt that I have, or mm -hmm. yeah, I know I, I'm gonna be cold, so I know I can put a jacket over it. You have to take that item in your head and take it to the next level of how are you actually going to wear it? Because I cannot tell you how many times I've been in women's closets and even now I do most of that virtually, but being in closets, we're like, oh, that still has the tags on it. Why, why, well, I couldn't figure out what to wear it with. Or going shopping without a plan. I know I referred to that earlier, but if you, are, and yes, you can go out and just sort of roam around if, if you enjoy shopping, but if you're somebody who doesn't like shopping, you want a plan. And in that plan is not only, okay, I'm looking for a blouse to wear with my black pants to wear to that party, okay. Mm -hmm. So then you have to figure out, you have to look at, okay, what colors am I looking for? And you have to make sure it fits right. And, and what if you're going to be cold? What will you wear over it? And how will you complete the outfit? You have to make sure that there are things in your head that allow you to take it to the next level. Mm. Other thing that happens, and in fact, I was just talking with one of my clients, emailing with one of my clients about this, is if you go to a store where the saleswomen are a little bit pushy and not all of them are, but sometimes you end up in a place. If you do not have a sense of how to assess something for yourself, so you feel confident saying yes or no, mm -hmm. they'll talk you into it. And you will go home with something you're like, I mean, I've done it myself. Yeah. I've done it myself. Sure. I once went shopping for myself, which I actually didn't, wasn't always able to do as much because I was always out shopping with everybody else. And I remember I tried on this top, the color was great. It fit me perfectly. I let, this was like 10 years ago. I let the saleswoman talk me into getting it. And I realized when I got home that one of the things I had forgotten to apply to it, I don't know why, was my inner beauty words. The part, that part of me, my essence. And so when I looked at this top, I thought, okay, this top looks sweet. I'm not sweet. <laughs> yes, I can do sweet things. I can. Right. I am not sweet. I am much, you know, too determined, too serious, too mm. um, just uh, focused in a way. You know, one of my inner beauty words is controlled fire. You know, that's not sweet. And I realized that this had a sweet sense to it. And every time I put it on, I'm like, ooh, okay, no. And I would take it off. And then I thought, Ginger, yeah. no, this is what you teach your clients, pay attention. And so I always have a list. This is my list for whenever I'm shopping for myself or I'm helping somebody else. These are the questions I always ask myself. Wow. No, I know exactly what you mean. Sometimes you'll see a beautiful blouse and it might have little tiny flowers for an example. And it's, it's very sweet it, or something like that. And I'm thinking, 
I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, the blouse is beautiful, but when I put it on, it's just, it feels like it's in such contrast to my personality. Exactly. And there are people out there, as you know, who are oh, sweet. Yeah. They're yeah. sweet. I have clients who are sweet. And for them, it's like, yes, hallelujah, this is perfect. So, you know, that's why being able to express our essence through our clothing makes us feel authentic in whatever we wear. So interesting because I really loved leather and suede and jeans. So like, what does that say about me? Right. But I love a silk blouse. I love cashmere, um, things like that. I just love a great pair of shoes, a great pair of boots. Right. So those, just those materials alone also expresses, right. Part of my identity. Everything that you put on expresses something about you and should express who you are mm. and make you happy to wear it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. So what is the number one thing that women can do to create a great wardrobe? So the number one thing is never, ever, ever, ever oh, settle, oh. For, settle for good enough. Yeah, I know. Really, I could have gone on and on and on with the evers and nevers because so many times I, there was one woman I remember she was in my class and I encourage the women in the class to send pictures and will and questions and mm -hmm. we'll talk about I always do it very sensitively. Um, we'll talk about, you know, what they need to talk about. And this one woman sent a picture of her in a top and she said, why don't I feel good in this? And I said, well, you know, the fit is great. The style is really nice, but I wouldn't have put you in the, that color. It was gray. Mm. And she said, well, it only came in black or gray. So I had to choose one. I'm like, um, there's a third option. Don't buy it. Keep looking. You know, that style looks great on you. Keep looking for that style in a color that makes you feel vibrant or you know, bold or sweet or whatever it might be that mm. that's who you are. So a lot of times what happens is people will go shopping and say, oh, all right, I give up. This is fine. <laughs> fine doesn't cut it. Decent doesn't cut it. Okay. Not horrible. Good enough. None of those things cut it ever. Okay. What I also learned um, is to treat myself treat myself every now and then. So I, you know, and I still shop TJ Maxx, right? I'm sure a lot of us, not, you know, always a great find at TJ Maxx. But I also find that when I go to one of these small boutiques, the whole experience is so much different. And that is part of, so when I buy a blouse that I bought in one of these boutiques, and they take, you know, you, you walk in, they say, oh, can I help you? Da, 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 da. And you're pointing out things and they're putting the clothes in the dressing room for you. It's a whole experience. It is. An experience. And they make you feel very special. And then you decide um, item you're going to purchase. And then they take it and they fold it so nicely. right? And then they put that pretty tissue and that gold foil <laughs> sticker. And then they put it in the bag. It's a completely different feeling and experience than it could be the same blouse that when I bought it at TJ Maxx and they just wrap it up <laughs> next. So part of um, what I also enjoy is not just the item of clothing, but the whole experience, because I really do. I want to pamper me. Yeah. Because it's 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 my life. <laughs> it's my journey. And so you know, I always want to feel good. Yeah. And boutiques are a way some people stay away from. They avoid them because they're worried it's just too expensive and people will be pushy. And the thing about boutiques is that you can find things there if the boutique is suited to you and your style and your mm -hmm. you know, what you like to wear and your all of that it can give you options that you don't see other places. Yes. It can be an experience. You also have to be willing to say no, that you don't want something. And also if it is above your price point and your budget, find out when they do sales and then go back and check out those sales. And th there are a lot of boutiques who are just happy to have people come in and, and check them out regularly and find out when things do go on sale. And mm -hmm. the other thing that's very popular right now, and I have a whole bunch of things in my closet from there, is uh, shopping consignment. 
Ah, oh, yes. My girlfriend's a big fan. Yeah. Yeah. And if your budget won't, you know, expand to some of the boutiques, depending on, you know, some boutiques are more expensive than others, yeah. then go find out what the brands are that you like, the designers that you like, and then go, they're a great online thread up, posh, well, Poshmark, the real, real, there are online consignment. And also I was just in a consignment store up in Newburyport recently and got a pretty top there. And you can, you know, find, you know, higher end pieces at reduced prices. So there's lots of ways to be able, and it's, it's, that doesn't give you as much of the experience as you're talking about, but it will give you things that may be able to uh, satisfy your budget with a little bit of something that's a little bit higher end, if that makes you happy. Yeah, my girlfriend, um, she loves consignment shops. So we do go to Newburyport. And there's also, I don't know if it's still there, but there's a couple, um, I, I think it's Main Street in Andover. Oh, yes. Yes, there are some great ones there. <laughs> so, and that's a fun experience, it right? Because it's like a treasure hunt. It is a treasure hunt. Absolutely a treasure hunt. Yes. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Okay. Um, one more thing. What are the two biggest obstacles women face when they open their closet to get dressed? All right. So <laughs> one of them is having too many clothes. And so many... and and. That's too many clothes that you're not wearing. You can have as many clothes as you want, although I am finding that women are, a lot of the women who come to me want a little more streamlined wardrobe, a capsule or something that allows them to be able to get dressed and use things multiple ways, but have a smaller wardrobe. But if you have a larger wardrobe and you're not wearing most of it, if not all of it, that's a huge obstacle because it mm. clutter and it boggles your mind and it overwhelms you and things can be kind of lost in there. I've, I've been in closets with women and they go, oh, look, I forgot I had this because it was all smushed in with all the things that they weren't wearing. Um, and the other thing is that having clothes, whether you have a few or a lot, and you can't make complete outfits out of them. Mm -hmm. There's always a reason for that. It might be that the colors don't all work together. It might be that the styles don't work. Maybe the lengths of things don't work and you need a tailor. I'm big on tailors. You know, they can just maximize your wardrobe for you and 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 uh, help to personalize mm. things for you. But those are two of the things, but the, by far the biggest is having too many clothes um, that you never wear in your closet. Yeah. And it's like, it's like you're, when your closet is cluttered, when your car is cluttered, when your desk is cluttered, when your kitchen is cluttered, that's a reflection of what's going on in here. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So how good does it feel? I know every day I'm right. I write notes all day long. I'm constantly, I have drawers of notebooks. At the end of the day, my desk is just loaded with notes. And then I just say, Am I ever really going to look at this note again? No, <laughs> you never. Have to think about that. I, I throw out so many notebooks because we're right. We can. Oh, I gotta. It's like that FOMO. Yeah. I, I have to write this down. I have to write this down. But at the end of the day, most likely you're never going to look at it again. So it's kind of the same thing with your wardrobe, right? If once you declutter it, now you can see what do I have here? What works with what? What colors do I like? What shapes and styles, right? So it makes just life so much easier. And I, I always thought um, when people travel, yeah. oh my gosh, once you have your style, et cetera, and pieces that work together, now when you go to travel, you can just mix and match. You don't have to bring your entire closet. <laughs> right. A few pieces that work from day to night. Right. Maybe you just bring a necklace to spruce it up or a, a pair of sandals with a little glitter to, to yeah. brighten it up. So so it's just so time saves time, saves money and aggravation. Absolutely. All of those things. Absolutely. OK. Um, so talking about accessories, <clears throat> excuse me, and colors and prints. Um, Many times I'll find a blouse that just has a big, bold, beautiful print. Could be big, bold flowers. When I wear it, I feel like I'm screaming at people. So as far as prints go, or even bold colors, if you're not too comfortable, but you want a pop of color, um, do you recommend 
a jacket or a sweater or something over it where the print is still showing, but you don't feel like it's screaming at everybody. Well, ideally with a print, and actually there's an article, I just did an article um, for a magazine. It's also, it's on my media coverage page and you can read it where I talk about prints. And um, so anybody can go there and learn more about it. And I also have an online, uh, just an on-demand class about, well, that's about mixing prints. But, and I talk about prints in my six week class. So prints are huge because I, a lot of times women will say to me, oh, I can't wear prints. I'm like, yeah, you can. Everybody can wear prints. You may choose not to, totally fine. Mm -hmm. But it's a way of adding visual interest to your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's how do you choose prints? And one of the things that's really important is that you want to make sure that the print itself expresses your inner beauty. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you said it's just too bold, then that's, you know, feeling like it's over the top for who you are. Okay. Or the scale of it might have been too big. But yes, if you love it and if the colors in it are great for you, yes, you can put a sweater or a jacket over it so you just see a little bit of it. Or you can do a scarf like with this top that I have on right now. My jacket, I can just take this scarf and add a little pop of a print. Oh my gosh. Right here with this. Oh, look at that. Look yeah, at I'm that. Done. I'm done. It changes the look of the outfit in a heartbeat. But I also know these colors are good for me. The scale isn't too big, you know, all of those kinds of things. So, um, and it allows me to wear a little bit of a print without having to have a whole entire outfit in a print. So mm. yeah, it, prints are powerful and they're wonderful. You want, you don't need a lot of them in your wardrobe, but you need ones that are perfect for you. Okay, and this is what you help people with, right? Absolutely, yeah. So what about, what about jewelry? What about like things like that? Like your hair comes up to here and your earring just hangs a little bit below that. Yeah. Yeah. I have to, I have some smaller earrings in my wardrobe um, and I have larger ones for when my hair gets long and it'll get even a tiny bit longer before I have it cut. So, and I like bigger earrings. That's me. So I like them to hang a little below my hair hair. If they're up here, no one's going to see them. Yeah, that's um, But I love earrings. I love jewelry. Anybody who's watched me in my front porch catwalks or online at all, they see me changing my jewelry and I wear fairly big jewelry. But this is like, this is one necklace. And what I love about this outfit, I kept it fairly simple and I like fairly simple. I really, mm -hmm. um, the colors that I wear are super important to me. And then I can change my jewelry. So for instance, I can add a, just a very simple, well, it's not that simple, but it's just gold. I can add a necklace like this. Oh it changes the look of the outfit completely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or I can, I'm a big one on mon, I love monochromatic. That's a, a, a love of mine. Even in my full outfit, I'm happy to do monochromatic. So I can even take a necklace like this, which is just, you know, it adds a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of texture, but it um, it's in the same color mm -hmm. as the rest of my outfit. And I can wear, I could wear this outfit every single day of the week, put on a scarf one day, one of the necklaces another day, and no one would know the difference. Wow. Yeah, Amazing. accessories are super powerful. Amazing. You can have a few clothes and more accessories and your outfit will look different every time you put it on. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> Fun. Okay, Fun. so I know we had a lot of men um, that were interested in joining us, um, mostly from link LinkedIn. Do these tips and suggestions apply to men as well? I would think so. But... Pretty much they do. You want colors that look great on you. You want to make sure the clothes fit you properly. You want to make sure that whatever you're wearing expresses your inner beauty. And that might not be a term most men identify with. But I have done inner beauty consultations with men. And um, because all of us, each of us is unique. I have done inner beauty consultations with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people 
no two people have ever had exactly the same inner beauty words to describe who they are. We are each unique. And knowing that information helps us to be able to make choices. So yes, all of those things are the same for men. They are obviously just making different clothing choices. That's all. Mm. Or not. Mm. It stays with, you know, the whole gender fluidity thing. Hey, you know what? Have fun. It, it's really quite amazing, the shifts that have happened. Yeah. It's really, really quite yeah. interesting. So as we start to wrap up, um, what advice can you give our audience who are looking for guidance to create their own style and those who may need a boost to refresh their personal style? So make sure that the things I just mentioned, the colors are great on you. It expresses who you are, your essence, the clothes fit you, all of those things. But a lot of times what happens is you may not know the answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. don't, that's where you want to reach out for help. I mean, I have gardens, you know, I live in the city, but I still have gardens more than anybody else around. We're lucky. We have these pretty gardens. I am not a gardener. You know, I can go out there and weed um, but I have somebody who helps me because otherwise God knows what my garden would look like by the time I was done. And I don't have the time to go out there and explore and let me plant this and then it dies. And so I get support that way. So if you aren't sure how to make your wardrobe work for you, that's when you reach out and get help. Always, always, always just one. If you remember nothing else from what we're talking about today, Make sure that anything that you bring into your wardrobe, always ask yourself, do I love it? And does it yes. make you feel beautiful? Yes. If it does not, it does not go into your wardrobe. If you're not sure why it doesn't, that's what happens sometimes is people, they have too many women. I work with women. So women have too many clothes, but like, oh, I can't get rid of that. What if I need it? Yes. Well, let's talk about why it doesn't work for you and never will. Or let's look at how we can repurpose it and make it work for you. Once you understand why something will or won't work, then you'll either wear it or you'll get rid of it and you'll feel confident doing either one. But always ask yourself, do I love it? And does it make me feel beautiful? And then if you cannot answer those questions as you go along, that's when you reach out and get help. Oh, definitely two important questions I always ask myself, yeah. like, do I love it? And how do I feel? Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So uh, before we end, and I just wanted to say too, um, because there's so much information out there, right? All you have to do is click something and you can get answers to everything. But there's something about working with another person, right? A coach, a mentor that understands, has been down that road. And there's a personal relationship. You can't find that in a book. You can't find that on Google, right? You can't find it on YouTube videos. You can gather a lot of information, but when someone is holding your hand through the process, it makes a world of difference. And it's funny because um, when, you know, especially if you're a mom or a parent, you invest so much in your kids to, whether it's a sport or dancing, whatever it may be, right? Some activity, you know that you're not gonna be able to teach them. You have to go to someone who knows how to do it. But when it comes to ourselves, it's amazing. Yeah. We don't invest in ourselves. A lot of times that's true. And you know, the internet is fabulous but it can lead you down a rabbit hole. For sure. And you can go like, oh, well, this person says this, and this person says this, and that website says that. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna tear my hair out. You yeah. know, so yeah, when you can have all the information in one place and whoever you work with, this is true whether you're working with a coach or a mentor or an image person or whatever, you wanna feel a connection to that person yeah. and appreciate the way that they work because they're gonna help you to move forward in whatever ever area of your life. And they encourage you, right? They see the right. growth. Yes, yes. And yes. sometimes you don't even see it yourself. They see the growth and they can encourage you right. and support you. It's really, I, I found it to be a world of difference. I mean, I've always, I've, I've had coaches, so many coaches. I still continue to have coaches because I know right. life can be very challenging. I don't want to do it alone. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right. I want to bring people on my journey. So, um, yeah, before we end, can you tell us a little bit about your book, That's So You, and then your online course? 
And then after that, what is the best way to get in touch with you for those you know, people that would like to learn more about how to dress with joy and ease? So let's start with your book. My book, That's So You, I wrote it um, actually about 10 years ago now. But unlike a lot of fashion books, it still is current. It's kind of, it's green. Um, so it, it gets the ball rolling. If you're, if, you're, if you're wanting just a little bit of support, it's a great way to kind of, first of all, see how I work. And secondly, get, um, get inspired. So that's what the book will do. And there's a lot of different, we, I talk about, you know, how to not settle for good enough and all those kinds of things are in there. Um, and it was a labor of love to create it. I, I love creating my book. Um, create your personal style in six weeks is something that I created when the pandemic started because I could no longer for a little while at least see anybody in person. And I had always wanted to create an online class where I was there teaching it live. Cause the thing about fashion is I had created a, a class where, you know, I had all these lessons and you go and you do it by yourself and great. That was a dismal failure <laughs> because the thing about fashion is it brings up more questions. So I want to be there live, being able to answer your questions when you get stuck. And I also identified the areas where women uh, struggle the most, you know, mm -hmm. expressing who you are at your essence with being able to create a good foundation in your wardrobe, you know, choosing a print or texture or accessories or shoes, shoes are so hard, creating a capsule wardrobe, any of those kinds of things I want to be able to support women. So um, that is something my next one starts in, um, in January, the end of January. Oh. Um, so, you know, you can get on perfect people. Perfect. Perfect. It is. It's, it works out really well. And you can get on the wait list and the people on the wait list are the first to hear when I open the registration, because there's a limited number of people that I let into the class. Oh. Um, so how many, it's you, how many do you let in? 30. 30. 30. Okay. Yeah. And is that because you can give some individual attention to everyone? I give it, yep. Yeah, for anyone who wants to and ask questions, they can send me questions. And generally they need to be accompanied by a photo because if they say, hey, do I look good in a V-neck? I'm like, I don't know. I need to see you. I need to see what kind of V-neck are you talking about? Those kinds of things. I'm very you know, sensitive to all of that and only the people in the class ever see the photos. And for people who don't want to send questions, they can learn as much from the uh, questions that other people are asking as they can oftentimes from asking their own, or they can do a one-on-one -on -one with me. Anyone in that program can do one-on-ones with me at a special price. So there's um, that option too, but it's a, it's a really fun class. Really. Oh, fun. I bet. Yeah, I've done it like 15 times just since COVID started. It's been very popular. So oh, that's wonderful. Okay. So um, what, how can people get in touch with you? What's the best way? The best way is, uh, well, they can go to my website, which is totalimageconsultants, with an S, dot com, and you'll see everything there. Um, and I'm if they're on social media, I do a front porch catwalk once a week. I, I post tips. I've seen them. They're great. Yeah, they're, they're fun. And so I, I'm pretty much on all social media. It's Ginger Burr, just my name. So okay. you can find me on all social media and follow me there as well. So. And I think you have... Um... A, f a freebie, a giveaway. Yep. How to stop yeah. wasting money on things you never wear. And it walks you through 10 steps to think about. Okay. Um, and you can find that on my website. Or if you want to go directly to it, you can go to 10, the number 10, 10fashionsecrets.com. We'll take you directly to sign up for that. And then you get my newsletter so that you get fashion tips um, along the way once you do that too. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Ginger, this has been delightful and insightful, and I'm sure um, our audience will use those tips because I know I will <laughs> in um, sprucing up their wardrobe. And if you are watching us live or if you're catching the replay, I thank you so much for being with us. Both Ginger and I understand the power of self-image and the power of self-expression. You know, they both go hand in hand. If either one of us can be of service to you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Every day matters. I thank you again to your continued growth and success. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Lou. Thank you.